A Healthy Place to Die has some really interesting elements to the narrative, but it's not a very well-written story. Some of the character actions are not very well written, and in some ways it's a carbon copy of the first film. This is the second gourmet detective film, and honestly... While I didn't hate it, it certainly was watchable. And as I said, there were some good parts. And I'll talk about that in a moment without spoilers to begin with. I don't know how enthusiastic I am for the next film. I will watch it, but I'm not completely desperate to see it. Whereas when I watched the first film, I was very curious to see what would happen in the second one. And honestly, based on the first one, I could have predicted it. So there won't be any spoilers to begin with, but then I will back up some of these negative things that I'm saying with a spoiler warning in a little bit. So this one, of course, stars Dylan Neal as Henry and Brooke Burns as Maggie. The film was released in 2015 and is directed by Scott Smith. And in this one, Henry is going to a conference uh, to be a speaker, which I thought was a pretty interesting way of having a, an interesting location, a hotel does actually appear quite frequently in Hallmark Mysteries because, well, I don't know if this is their reasoning, but I think it works well because you have a lot of suspects, you have a lot of ground to cover, and that obviously makes things potentially quite suspenseful. And while there, Henry looks out of his window and he sees a body floating in the water. And, of course, he goes to get Maggie, who just so happens to be there with him because she's been forced to take vacation days from her work because she hasn't been taken any, so she agrees to go with him. She goes down with him. The body is gone. And it's unclear where this body is. And part of the film is trying to work out where Kathleen has gone. They realise it's Kathleen because an item of hers has been left behind. And they try and find out what's going on. Now, part of me thinks that Maggie didn't handle this professionally, but she does give a reason. Because I think she would have called this in. There's no way that she could think this is a suspected murder, because that's what Henry was saying. Henry was saying there was a body lying face down. Anybody would jump to the conclusion that it's murder and somebody has moved the body. If Maggie believed that, or even if she believed something had happened, she should have called it in. But in her defence as well, she did say... There's not a body. At best, it's a missing persons case, and you can't file that for general adults, i.e. non-vulnerable individuals, for 24 hours. So I understand her logic, but at the same time, if somebody says to you, I saw a body, you're supposed to take that seriously as a police officer. Now, she does try and investigate it, and I won't say exactly what happens there, but on the flip side, I also want to give her credit because she's able to get information from people quite cleverly. Without going into too much detail, she was able to obtain somebody's shoe size in a way that felt so natural. And I thought that was very clever. And that kind of restored, it restored my faith in her after I kind of thought she was acting rather unprofessionally. I then thought, okay, you're still really good at your job because that was pretty incredible. So it goes both ways. So I did say there were some good things about it. And that is the mystery of where Kathleen or her body could have gone. I genuinely was interested to find out because not a lot of time had passed between Henry looking out of the window, going to get Maggie, and then going downstairs. That's a, a really short period of time for anybody to move her. And I obviously I didn't know what was happening, and I was keen to find out. So that part was quite interesting. But I found the suspects to be very boring, and everybody's motives were really dull. So the actual information that we gather as Henry and Maggie try and investigate this wasn't very interesting. And while I can't say it was terribly written, I don't think it was very well written either, both in terms of the, the pacing of the narrative and the progression of the story, and also some of the characters' actions. I'm not fully convinced that Maggie was acting professionally at all. As I said, she did give some reasons, but at the same time, not really fully buying it. And there was also one occasion where Henry was able to work something out, and he... Oh, I'll, I'll actually I'll explain that one with a spoiler warning, as I don't want to go into too much detail without spoiling it. As I I do recommend it, but only if you liked the first film, as I do think the first film was a lot stronger. 
So if you liked that, you might like this. If you didn't like that, I'd say chances are this one's not going to appeal either. But either way, give it a go if it sounds like it would appeal to you. It's not amazing. It's not perfect. The characters are not completely believable, but I didn't hate it. It is watchable, and the characters aren't irritating either. I say this because there are some Hallmark mysteries where the protagonists are just completely unlikable. And that's not the case here. Even though I wasn't convinced with some of the character writing, I still liked them, and I liked the dynamics. So that worked very well. And I think that that's why it was an okay watch. Even if the narrative wasn't perfect, I was still intrigued to find out what happened, and I did like the characters. So it, it ticks some boxes. Worth checking out if it appeals to you. I will now explain a few things with a spoiler warning, just so uh, it's fair. It's Obviously, if I were to say these things are all bad and then not go into any detail, that's not exactly fair. So I will now explain in more detail those aspects. And the first thing that I was about to mention before is when Henry walked into the room and within about four seconds noticed the eye drops happened to realise that it was poisoning from the eye drops and just coincidentally happened to have an experience with that. How many people experience people being poisoned with eye drops twice in their life? It was just too unrealistic for my liking. The other bits that I thought were actually terrible. This one I thought was horrendously written because it was a carbon copy of the ending of the first film. So this will also spoil the first film for you. And at the very end, they confront the suspect, fair enough, and in both the previous film and this one, the suspect manages to tie one of them up. Granted, it was Maggie and the handcuffs the first time, this time it's Henry and the duct tape, so slightly different, but still the exact same scenario. And then ultimately Maggie gets held at gunpoint and right at the last moment, Henry comes along and saves her. Now, that's not saying very much for our detective character. And I just find it a bit ridiculous that both films have ended in exactly the same way. I'm hoping this is not a recurring theme because it was fine in the first film. But to actually end both films in the same way suggests a distinct lack of creativity. They could have done so many things with this. But to make it a basically a carbon copy ending with a few changes, I was a little bit, in fact, very disappointed. And I, I've never seen this before. I've watched a lot of Hallmark Mysteries, Aurora Tea Garden, Garage Sale, Mystery 101, Picture Perfect. And out of all of them, none of them, to my recollection, had the same ending in any of the series. So that was a little bit strange and very badly written. So had I watched this on its own and I hadn't seen the previous one, it might have been an okay ending. But if you're going to go and have two parts of a series back to back with the same ending with subtle differences, it's not good writing. So that was not leaving me in the best of moods at the end of the film. Nevertheless, I am slightly looking forward to the next film. I'm curious about the next film. And it still has the potential for me to end up really liking this series. There are only three more. It's quite a short series, but I'm not I'm not predicting the next one is going to be bad. I feel like it could regain a lot of praise and the characters, as I said, are actually quite likable. So I'm looking forward to seeing what they get up to next. I'm also keen to see how they can have more stories revolving around food. Very excited about that part. But for now, A Healthy Place to Die is not a great film. It has a terrible carbon copy ending. The characters are not necessarily believable, but I still enjoyed some of it. And if you liked the first film, then I'd say it's worth checking out.